Guten Tag und willkommen zu dem nächsten Video in der Serie Grammatik Wiederholung. Heute sprechen wir über Kasus auf Deutsch. So, we're going to speak about the German case system today and get ready for me to attempt to squeeze three years worth of German grammar into one video. Here we go. So, there are four grammatical cases in German. So, what is a case? Well, a grammatical case is just telling you what a noun or pronoun is doing in the sentence, what role it's playing. For instance, being a subject, a direct object, an indirect object, object for preposition, and so on. So, we have technically cases in English, but we're only talking about them don't matter because we don't really change that much. Um, we change our pronouns from subject to object pronouns, and that's about it. In German, however, pronouns change, the articles change, the adjectives change, and sometimes the nouns even change their spelling based on the gender and the case of the noun. So there's a lot more information given in those words in German than in English, and that's why we talk about cases and they matter. So here are the four cases. First, we have the nominative case, when you hear nominative, you need to think that's the subject of the sentence or a predicate nominative, which is renaming or identifying the subject. The accusative case, you should think, okay, that's going to be a direct object or the, an, an object of an accusative preposition. It could also be an object of a mixed preposition with motion. Dative, when you think dative, you need to think that's an indirect object or it could be the object of a dative preposition or the object of a mixed preposition with location. And then genitive, you need to think that's going to show possession in some way and have that idea of the word of in it. All right, so starting with nominative. Um, so this first case, this is used whenever a noun or a pronoun is the subject of a sentence or the predicate nominative in a sentence. So just like in English, predicate nominative is when you're restating or identifying the subject. So it would naturally come after the verbs heißen, to be named, sein, to be, and then werden, to become. So for instance, uh, in this first sentence here, der Student, studiert by UAB, um, der Student is the subject and therefore it's nominative. In the second sentence, er wird Arzt. Er is the subject, so it's nominative. And then Arzt, he's becoming a doctor. This is the predicate nominative, so it's still a nominative case. Er heißt Paul. He is named Paul. Both of those are nominative. Ich bin Lehrerin. Um, I am a teacher. Both of those are nominative. So we've got subject, predicate, nominative examples there. So definite and indefinite articles and pronouns are all in their original forms in nominative. So we should know this from Deutsch 1, but our indefinite pronouns, or sorry, our indefinite articles are ein, eine, and ein. We see that the uh, genders are given here um, with color, so ein for masculine, eine for feminine, ein for neuter. And then for definite articles, the, der, die, das, and then die for plural. Pronouns, ich, du, er, sie, es, wir, ihr, and z for you formal and z for they. Now, take note that ein words are also going to follow the same endings as our indefinite articles, and der words are going to follow the same endings as our definite articles here. So these words that are listed, or your ein words are pretty much just going to be your possessives and kind, and then your der words, we've got the list here. So those endings, those ER endings, can also change to be other endings. And for all of our cases, the ein words and the der words are going to follow suit. All right, so moving on to accusative. The accusative case is used when a noun or pronoun is the direct object. It could also be an object of an accusative preposition or of a mixed preposition with motion. Now, there's a couple other things listed here that weren't on the first slide because they're just not quite as important to remember because um, they won't uh, make as big of a difference in understanding the sentence. But you also use accusative when you have a definite time phrase or a measure. So, for instance, if you're measuring, like, for a recipe or something like that. So zum Beispiel, ich habe einen Hund. Notice here we have einen Hund. So Hund is masculine and we see that here it's the direct object because I'm saying I have a dog. Er springt für Leckereien. He jumps for treats. Here the Leckereien is accusative because it's following the preposition für. So let's look at what those Accusative prepositions and endings are. So our accusative prepositions are durch, für, gegen, ohne, um, bis, and entlang. Um, whenever you use anything as an object of one of these accusative prepositions, it's always going to be in the accusative case. 
take note that when we look at our indefinite and definite articles here, when we look at our pronouns, um, we see that all of the masculine things change. The masculine articles change their spelling from the original, and so does the masculine third person pronoun. But when we look at the other pronouns, we see a lot more than just that changes. So our first person pronouns change. So ich becomes mich, uh, wir becomes uns. Our second person pronouns, they're going to change only in the informal. So du becomes dich, ihr becomes euch. But we see that the z here does not change. So in order to remember that these accusative prepositions are these and not the others, I've got a little song for you and um, hopefully it'll help you keep them straight from the dative ones that we're about to learn. So for durch für gegen ohne um bis entlang, I sing durch für gegen ohne um bis entlang, durch für gegen ohne um bis entlang, and that just helps me remember that uh, those are the accusative ones. All right, moving on to dative. So the dative case is only going to be used when a noun or pronoun is the indirect object of a sentence, or if it's the object of a dative preposition or a mixed preposition that indicates location. Um, the other times when dative could be used is with specific dative verbs. All right, so let's take a look here. First, we're going to start with our dative prepositions. Aus, ouser, by, mit, knock, sight, von, zu. Um, there's some specific details about each of these next to them uh, that you can take a moment and pause and read. In order to remember these dative prepositions and keep them straight from the accusative ones, I have a different song. So for this one, I sing, Al sauser by mit, knock sight, von zu. Al sauser by mit, knock sight, von zu. All right, so um, hopefully those little tunes will help you keep your accusative and dative prepositions straight. All right, so with any noun or pronoun used as an object of these dative prepositions, then they're going to be in the dative case. So what does that look like? Well, when we look at our pronouns for dative, we see that everything now has changed from the original. So instead of ish, we have mir. Instead of do, we have dear. Instead of airs yes, we have eem, ear, and eem. And then instead of vir, we have uns, so that looks the same as the accusative. Instead of ir, we have oish, also the same as the accusative. But now our z for you formal and z for they have changed to enen. And the way we know which one is the formal is that it's capitalized. Um, so, Beispiele here, meine Mutter hat es mir gegeben. My mom gave it to me. And gefällt es dir? Literally, we'll, we would say, do you like it? But the literal translation is, is it pleasing to you? So you'll notice when you're using your dative pronouns, it usually expresses the idea of being like to someone, for someone, or on behalf of someone. So those are the pronouns. Here are the articles. So our indefinite articles, we have einem, einer, einem. For definite, it's dame, der, dame. And then for plural, dane. Um, some examples here, Beispiele, ich gebe dem Ball, or sorry, ich gebe dem Hund der Ball. So I give, this is like to the dog, the ball. Okay, I give the dog the ball. Here we see this is your indirect object. Er spielt mit dem Ball. Okay, now we see that dem Ball is dative because of mit, it's the object of the uh, dative preposition. Ich gebe der Katze das Garn would be I give the cat the yarn. So the cat here, it's going to the cat, right? So it's an indirect object. And then sie spielt mit dem Garn. We again have mit here, making dem Garn dative. All right, and other reasons why something would be dative, here's some common dative verbs. All of these verbs um, are gonna take dative objects. So you can pause the video and take a moment to look through these. Most of them have the idea of like two or four someone or something, uh, which kind of makes it feel natural to use dative, but some of them in English don't have that idea really with them, um, but in German they do. All right, and moving on to common verb and preposition combos. So over here we have some verbs with mixed prepositions that take accusative. And then here we have a few that take dative. So look over those. This is just most of these verbs we have already learned. This is just kind of reminders um, of which case to use with these. All right. 
So let's try this out. Um, verben mit directen und indirekten Objekte. So we know if we have a direct object, it should be an accusative case. And if we have an indirect object, it should be in the dative case. So pause the video and fill in the blank with what uh, word you think would go there. The word's given in parentheses and pay close attention also to gender when it's an article in front of a noun. All right, so about to show the answers here. See how you did. All right, take a moment to check. And we're moving on, okay. So, um, adjectiven mit dativ objekt. So sometimes you use dative because you have an adjective and you're saying that something, you're describing something with that adjective and you're saying that it is that way to someone. So um, for instance, I could say um, that someone is kind to me. I could say like er ist mir lieb. Or I could say that it was um, correct or fair um, to her. I could say es ist ihr recht. Or I could say um, I am similar to my mom. Ich bin ihr ähnlich, so similar to her. So with all of these, the idea is that like to someone or something um, with the adjective. So try these out here. Uh, what would go here if I were saying das or war das blank nicht bewusst oder nur nicht wichtig? And I want to say was that not known to him or just not important to him? So here and then es muss ganz peinlich sein. I want to say it must be really embarrassing to her. And then doc er ist to them. And then really kind. So he is really kind to them. And then der Urlaub war to us. Einfach zu teuer. So the vacation was too expensive for us. And then das ist uh, gerade klar geworden. That just became clear. And then to me. So what do you think would go in each of these? All right. See how you did. Okay, and move into the next one. So when we're distinguishing between accusative and dative, one of the things we didn't do yet is what about those mixed prepositions? We saw um, that we have durch, für, gegen, ohne, um, bis, lang. Well, those are accusative, and they're always going to be accusative. And then we have aus, aus, er, bei, mit, nach, seit, von, zu. Those are dative. They're always going to be dative. But there's a bunch more prepositions than just those. We have an, auf, in, über, for, hinter, zwischen, unter, neben. And all of these are called two-way or mixed prepositions because they could be accusative or they could be dative. So how do you know? Well, if some, if a, one of these prepositions is used in a prepositional phrase describing motion from one place to another. So answering the question, wohin, where to, or woher, where from. Or if you're talking about fahren, driving somewhere, gehen, going or walking somewhere, fliegen, flying somewhere, kommen, coming, legen, uh, laying something down, setzen, setting something down, stellen, standing something, like taking it and putting it on a surface, or hanging, hanging something up. Um, all of those imply motion from one point to another, and so your prepositional phrase would have accusative. But if you're using one of these two-way prepositions and you're using it in a phrase to describe the location of something, to answer the question of wo, where it is, and you're saying maybe the verb sein, to be, like it is laying there, or they are there, Liegen, lying, if something's just lying on some surface. Sitzen, if something's sitting somewhere. Stehen, if something's just standing somewhere. And then hanging, if something's just hanging somewhere, but there's no motion involved, just a location. Then you're going to use dative with those. All right, so um, when we look at our accusative versus dative verbs, um, just as an FYI, when we look at these verbs, legen, stellen, setzen, hangen, all of those are regular weak verbs and they all imply motion and so they're all going to be accusative and it's all verbs to like put something somewhere and then these verbs here liegen, stehen, sitz, and hangen they're all verbs for something being located somewhere so they're always going to be dative now stecken can go either way that's like to either plug something in or to stick something into something um, and it could be stuck there or it could be that you're sticking it there um, and so if there's motion involved accusative if it's a location then dative 
All right, moving into genitive. So the genitive case is used to show possession or close relationships with a noun. We don't use it with names. So I wouldn't, for instance, use genitive with my name, Frau Buter. I wouldn't say like, um, das ist das Video der Frau Buter and try to say like the video of Frau Buter. You could say das ist Frau Buter's video and just put like a S on the end of my name and be done with it. So you don't need to use uh, genitive. You cannot use genitive with just names of people like that. Um, but with nouns, you have to. Um, you can't just add an S at the end to show possession. Whenever using genitive, there's usually this idea of the word of with regards to the noun that's expressed. So for instance, um, in diesem Beispiel, die Marke des Pullis, the brand of the sweater. Um, der Zweck des Artikels, the point of the article. Das Haus meiner Mutter, the house of my mom or my mom's house, right? Okay. So, genitiva prepositionen. So first we're going to look at the more common ones. Um, anstatt, trotzt, während, wegen. And of course, I have a song for this one as well. This song goes, anstatt, trotzt, während, wegen, genitiv. Anstatt, trotzt, während, wegen, genitiv. And you could keep going. Um, so these are common genitive prepositions. Now, less common are these here. If you need to pause and remind yourself of what these mean, go for it. And we're going to move on. All right, so genitive. What do your articles look like? So um, your indefinite articles become eines, einer, eines. Your definite articles are des, der, des, and der. And one big thing that has not happened before is that masculine and neuter nouns are also going to get an ending of es if they're one syllable or just an s if they're more than one syllable. Um, so the that's going to be added to the end, so it's going to look a little bit different. And we saw that in the examples on the last slide. The last reason why you might use genitive is to show indefinite time. So there's some indefinite time expressions. Uh, eines Morgens is like one morning, some morning, one of these mornings. Eines Tages, one day, some day, one of these days, and so on. You'll notice that Eines Nacht is in italics here because it's kind of weird, because Nacht is actually feminine, D Nacht, but because it's following suit with all of the other time phrases, it's Eines Nacht. It really, if it was following the rule, wouldn't be, so it's kind of an exception. All right, so pause the video and see if you can put in what uh, the correct um, pronoun or uh, I guess possessive pronoun on these and articles on these two would be. And then on the neuter and the masculine examples, what the ending would be. All right, and here are our answers. See how you did. All right. So to keep all these sight frozen straight with one another, all these time phrases, um, how do we remember which ones are accusative, which ones are dative, which ones are genitive? So there is an easy way to remember this. If it's a definite time phrase, eine bestimmte Zeit Phrase, um, then it can either be accusative or dative. If there's no preposition, it's going to be accusative, like jeden Tag, jede Woche, jeden Sommer, zwei Stunden, fünf Minuten. If it's with any kind of preposition, then it's always going to be dative. So am Tag, in der Woche, am Wochenende, am Morgen, im Sommer, and so on. Now for indefinite time phrases, unbestimmte Zeitphrasen, we have genitiv. So this is our summary slide <laughs> that kind of puts everything together. So up top, we've got the reasons why something would be those cases. Here we have the endings that are associated with the genders and plural for each of those cases and then the pronouns. Now um, the way that a lot of teachers uh, get students to remember this is Reese, Nisi, Mr. Man, Sir, Sir. Um, but obviously when you are mid-sentence and you're trying to come up with that ending on a dime, you're not going to be able to draw this out in your mind. So one of the best ways to do it is really to practice over and over again just thinking like Dative masculine M, genitive neuter S, accusative masculine N, 
nominative to feminine E and just be able to like have those associations really quick um, and it comes with time. Now pronouns, um, you'll notice that right down here I actually gave a couple pronouns that I did not give you on the genitive slide. There are a couple of uh, genitive pronouns but they're not used very often. Um, so if you see something like mine it vegan, dine it vegan, um, this is like um, on my account or because of me or for me and the same thing could be for you or on your account or because of you. Um, they're pretty rare and you can't actually uh, always use uh, in regular genitive all the pronouns that you would want. So um, don't worry about those at this level. That's something that would be um, at the next level a little bit more complex. Okay, danke für das Zuschauen. Das wäre alles für heute. Schauen Sie mein nächstes Video um, und Bis das nächste Mal. Tschüss.